St. Louis Maria speaks to us of devotion to the Blessed Virgin in terms of a perfect and entire consecration, consisting of giving herself totally, as a slave of love, to Our Lady. It is a true text to us, strictly speaking. Now, this implies a complete surrender, without any exception, of everything we are, in body and soul, and we possess, both externally and internally. The object of this surrender, therefore, encompasses the following realities. The body, with all its goods, and the soul, with all that it can somehow possess. We entrust it unreservedly to the care of Maria, who is now able to dispose of everything as her own property and property. Nothing escapes your landlord. Home, family, economic resources, merits, graces, virtues, satisfactions, etc. This emulation that we make of our whole being of Jesus Christ at the hands of Mary may seem excessive to some and little advantage to others. In fact, wouldn't it be imprudent to abdicate so radically even the value of our simplest prayers? The answer is found, of course, in the pages of the Gospel. In the parable of the prodigal son, in fact, we see how the excessive attachment to oneself and one's own goods, in a word, to this disorderly desire to be the master of one's own nose, invariably leads to the most abject of slavery, that of a creature rational, called to participate in the holiness of God Most High, submitted to irrational creatures. That ungrateful son, with so much waste of his father's fortune, ends up with nothing, envying the washing of pigs, cf. LK 1516. It is only when he renounces the false autonomy of a life focused on himself that he, recognizing before the Father that he is not worthy to be called his son, receives the best garment in the most precious ring, cf. LK 1521. That is what we do when we consecrate ourselves to the Blessed Virgin. We recognize ourselves to be sinners, less than employees in the Father's house, slaves to vices and sins, and we give her all our goods, so that she can take care of them and use them as she sees fit. So there is no danger of losing everything because of our folly, since the Virgin is very prudent in the best of administrators, nor being left with nothing, since, as a provident mother, she will never leave us without what is necessary. Putting everything at your disposal, we gain the assurance that we will not lack anything, since it, because it is very just, does not squander or waste, but it uses what is offered to it in the best possible way. She will guard our bodies, in health and in sickness, with all her members, and will never refuse to give her mother's affection to those who entrust her as slaves. We also consecrate our soul with its faculties, intelligence and will, and all our virtues, natural and infused, as well as sanctify grace, the favors received from God, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the meritorious, satisfactory and impetratory value of our good works. Therefore, nothing stays with us. Everything we own becomes hers. Whatever we do, we must do it for her and in order to please her and serve her well. The soul who consecrates himself thus no longer has the right to have anything that is his without Mary's permission, since everything, without any reservation, has been given to him one, 